I'm just going to warn you, our guest today is David Ford. I can't wait. Jones has been awaiting this interview no, I'm with excited. bated breath. Golf bros. We're just golf bros. Jones loves the Walker Cup. I do. He has been talking about this for months. I'll just get out of the way. You guys go. No. David, thanks for being here. Yeah, yeah of course. Dave, okay. So uh, if you've been listening to the pod, you know recently Team USA was essentially just Carolina extended across the pond and a uh, big comeback to beat Great Britain and Ireland. Okay. How much smack talk is there in an event like this? And is it equal to less than or greater than than like when you get into match play like in the NCAA? Like what level are we talking here? Yeah, I say it's it's not any there's no direct smack talk like with <laughs> with the opponents. I yeah. think it's more honestly it's more like team USA team room like this guy is doing this from the other team, and like right. we're going to talk about it. <laughs> um, is, the, is the crowd hostile, or are we still being classy? Yeah. When when we're amateurs out there, we're still being classy about it. Yeah, the crowd is hostile for sure. Really? Uh, at St. Andrews, they were. I know there were a few instances where uh, my teammates on Team USA weren't treated the best, but really? only a few instances. Uh, for the most part, they were... Um, pretty respectful, I'd say. Um, very loud, especially for Great Britain and Ireland. Um, but I mean, it's it's what you want. It's a, a loud environment for golf, which is fun. I was going to ask you. I mean, I think for the most part in golf tournaments, it, it's everybody's trying to be classy out there, right? But yeah. you get into one of these, like, does that juice you up a little bit? Like, if it is yeah. a little bit more heated? Yeah, it's it's way different than anything I've ever played in before. Um, like. It's pretty obvious that like you're either cheering for Team USA or cheering for Team Great Britain and Ireland, and um, like the fans will let you know. So I think it's it's rowdier than a normal golf tournament. It's not individual. Uh, like sure. People people aren't just there to have a good time and watch the scenery. You're either cheering for one team or the other. There was a story, and I think the London paper complaining about some of the Team USA celebrations. Yeah. That's what happens when you lose, Adam. That's loser talk. <laughs> that, that is definitely like you finished second place in the Walker Cup talk. Were you getting flack for the celebrations there? Uh, I wasn't. Um, <laughs> I, I know some of my teammates were um, just, I think they had a, I'm not going to say which teammates, but I think they had a lot of fun when one of them made a putt um, and might have celebrated a little bit early, um, just could have could have gave it like twenty more seconds for the, <laughs> the the opponent to shake his hand, but um, yeah, there. I mean, it's we talked about it. It's it's unlike anything you've ever played before. I mean, you're playing for your country, and um, it's kind of just a different atmosphere, especially when the fans have been that loud all week. So, yeah. um, I mean, the media can uh, say what they want about early celebrations or uh, rowdy celebra- celebrations, but um, it, it is just it feels different when you're playing for your country. So it meant a lot to us. When was the first time you realized that it was different? Like as you're doing it, what, when was the first time you're like, oh, this this either feels different or looks different. Something's different. Yeah, I think it was. Um, it definitely wasn't in the practice rounds. Um, like the practice rounds, I thought there were going to be a ton of people. Uh, I guess the we played in a tensum for the for two holes just for wow. the media. Um, Team USA, just everybody on Team USA played together the day before the tournament. So I think it was it had to have been Friday morning. Um, and I thought there were going to be, I heard there were going to be like a thousand people just watching our practice round group for those two holes, but there were only like a hundred, uh, maybe 200. And it was mainly just friends and family. So, um, but then we show up on Saturday and there's, uh, quite a few people and definitely a lot of people on the first tee and it was, um, pretty nerve wracking, but really exciting. That was kind of, I guess the first tee, the first day was when I, uh, realized that there were a ton of people there and it felt different. That's a sweet shirt. Do you just get awesome golf stuff all the well, time? All, and you can see this on the gold feed. All the gear is cool. The hat's cool. Yeah. He's got yeah. on cool shoes. <laughs> yeah. like, head to toe. Is that just David's golf life? Swag. It is it is amateur golf life. I, I would say it's <laughs> it's nothing that I've uh that I've picked out for myself. Like none of the if it's cool, then it's not my own style. It's not my own doing. Um but yeah, this shirt is brand new. The tag came off of it yesterday. I was gonna wear it to uh, during the USAM, but I got eliminated early. So it was my, actually my final round shirt. So it's like uh, USAM or come on the pod. Yeah. Which one of these am I going to wear this awesome shirt <laughs> it, for? It worked. It's clean, so it worked <laughs> out perfectly. Um, uh, there's a lot I want to talk about. Okay. First of all, tell me why Carolina was the choice for you. And, and I think you and some other guys have, have obviously helped turn Carolina golf into something that it was striving to be. What, what was it about? Coach DiPetto, what was it about the program, whatever, that that made you say, you know what, that's that's somewhere I want to be? Yeah, I think there was a, a lot about it that attracted me. Um, I knew that the program had momentum, so it was 
out of the schools I was looking at, it was the lowest ranked school. Uh, mm-hmm. Like we weren't ranked. I think we were probably top 30, but all the other schools that I was looking at were top 10. Um, so it was kind of a, a chip on the shoulder program and it didn't, it had a ton of momentum. Um, and I felt like there was a ton of belief from the, within the program, but everyone I talked to outside of the program, like questioned why I was looking at Carolina. Um, so, I mean, that just kind of invited me more to be like, all right, what's going on here? Like, why don't these people see it the same way I do? Um, and then ultimately I'd say what, what solidified the decision was talking to coach DiBattetto. And, um, I noticed after a round I played in junior golf in August, 2018 or 2019, I guess that, um, I had a bad round and I wanted to call coach DiBattetto cause I felt like he could encourage me and, um, like, instruct me in how to play better the next day. So, Mm. um, after that, it was kind of, uh, cut and dry. And all I had to do was just silence the doubts in my head of like, all right, this program will be good. Um, like it does have momentum because, uh, UNC golf was doing all the right things. And I just had to trust that. What has helped it take those steps that you thought you saw the potential that the program could take? How have y'all actually taken those steps? Yeah, I think it's been a culmination of a ton of things. And um, there's the list is too long to say them all. But I think it all starts with uh, Coach DiBattetto's passion and his drive to get better and like to see the program succeed. Because uh, I've never met a guy who's more dedicated to making a golf program better. Mm. Um, and just the the details that he, he – we've gotten better every single year somehow. And we've, we've brought in players – after years that we've had that are amazing, we've brought in players that are great players, but um, it seems almost impossible to get be- to do better than we did last year. And like Coach DiBattetto always makes a point to like continue to improve. And um, there's so many things that he does just day in and day out and works so hard that um, you just don't find in any other coach. Um, and I've never seen a, a guy more dedicated and a guy more passionate to making everyone better that's around him. Just in when I've seen you play, I think passion's a good word to describe how you play. Like for the most part, you keep it even keel, but every now you can tell when like you're, you're <laughs> ready to go. How, how do you try and keep those emotions in check? Um, when you're out there on the course, especially in a big, a big, a big moment. Yeah. It, it, uh, it kind of depends. I feel like I have, I kind of have two gears and it's either like, <laughs> like no facial expression or a smile after a bad shot. Um, and just try to like, not care as much, like try to care as little as possible about the bad shots. Um, or then my other mode is like just losing my mind and crazy. (laughs) Um, and it's usually in a a positive way. I I hope it's never in a negative way, but, um, yeah, I think that the last like four years, especially I've kind of seen how attitude impacts golf. Um, and I feel like I've been blessed to like, just kind of see how those two are related and then use my attitude and a, a positive attitude on the course to, uh, make me even better and perform better when the times are hard on the golf course. And um, I feel like just keeping a positive attitude has like served me really well uh, in my, I guess, the last three or four years. And um, and then obviously when something good happens and it's usually not in an individual tournament that I'll, I'll go crazy. It's only the only time, the only two times I feel like um, that I've really lost my mind is at nationals uh, this past year in May and then at the Walker cup uh, a few weeks ago. So and just when it's all on the line. Yeah. When it's when it matters the most. Yeah. When I'm playing for either my school or my country, I feel like it means way more to me. Uh, yes, David Ford. All right. <laughs> um, you said attitude, like I find, and now granted, I'm not as good as David Ford. Other than this one time, I almost hit a hole in one, uh, with Tyler Hansborough in my playing <laughs> group, but don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> How do you not get down? I mean, I, every golfer is going to have a bad round, a bad shot, whatever. How do you not get down? How do you keep the attitude positive? Because it feels like a sport to me where you could very easily get negative. Yeah, it's – it's. I mean, I haven't played that many other sports, but I think it's the game that beats you down the most. Um, you win right. an incredibly low percentage of the time. Um, so it, I guess there's two things that – I've really focused in on the last few years that have really helped me. And the first is positive self-talk. And that's something that we talk about as a program of like, if you see someone out there like talking down to themselves, they're probably not going to be like in a good headspace. Um, so positive self-talk is huge. And then um, it's honestly really simple for me is I have Bible verses in my head mm. the entire round. And that's kind of, if I'm thinking about those verses more than I'm thinking about thoughts like shots and golf and just like, anything related to golf, then my attitude is going to be more positive. Um, so yeah, I have Bible verses going, uh, before every shot. And if I, if I don't, then uh, my attitude's usually not in as good of a spot. So, 
Uh, if you ever see me behind the ball and just staring at the ball for like 10 <laughs> seconds, I'm usually thinking <laughs> of the verse. And however, however long it takes me, that's, uh, that's when I pull the trigger. So yeah, it's, it's, it's really simple. Like, uh, I feel like the, the Lord's thoughts are better than my thoughts. So like, why wouldn't I keep those in my head? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I, I think now I'm just going to start telling you good things about the pod all the time. Yeah. Uh, Jones, you really nailed that interview. Yeah, you that was great, buddy. You edited that one up really uh, well. How did you drop in that audio? Um, every golfer on the Carolina golf team is probably the best golfer that anyone around them had really ever seen before. And then mm-hmm. they got here and found a bunch of guys who were also really good. What's that like in practice and how do you find the kind of person who that appeals to instead of being mad that they're not the clear cut best anymore? Yeah, I think it's a, it takes a special group of guys and um, because if everyone is super competitive and super mean to each other, then um, no, no one's going to like each other. And luckily this year, especially, and I think last year as well, we have a group of guys who are super competitive and all really talented um, and really highly ranked, but also a group of guys that we all like each other. Um, and I think that's really hard to come by, but the fact that we enjoy hanging out together and enjoy, um, I guess just simple, like low key banter, um, just in the van ride, just <laughs> something stupid. Um, we're all, we're all idiots at times. And, um, it's, it's really fun with the group of guys we have. Um, and I guess that's kind of what, what keeps it, uh, mellow, I guess, if you will, um, when we are really competitive. Low key. That's the back half of every show. Low key yeah, banter. Low key that's banter. how we uh, normally do it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Tell us a little bit about Finley renovation, what it's going to be like for you as a player. Because, I mean, I think we're hoping right in the next month, maybe a little longer than that, that it's going to be back and ready. What What are you guys anticipating with the renovated Finley? Yeah, I think it's it's open to us now. I think the guys actually got around in this morning. Oh, good. Uh, my clubs are still in New York coming back from Scotland, but... Um, that, that's what happens when you win the Walker <laughs> Cup. Sometimes you just got to wait. Mine were, the only, my, mine were the only clubs that got left behind, too. That, that's a... <laughs> That's a different story. <laughs> Were they with Ben Alexander's bag? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, just gone somewhere. <laughs> um, but yeah, Finley, we're really excited about it. I think our facility is, some of our facility is done and usable. And then uh, the golf course is playable for the UNC golf teams right now. Um, but yeah, it's my coach. To, I've never, I haven't been out there to play yet um, just because I've been at the Walker Cup and then clubs haven't arrived yet. So <laughs> that's, a, that's a different story though. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, it's it's a little bit harder, I think, uh, more challenging for, uh, I guess, more elite players. And then our practice facility itself just has so many options. Uh, we got a bunch of target greens that go from 40 to 210 yards or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're all like measured out to PGA Tour average or strokes gain leaders on the PGA Tour for like a certain yardage. So it's it's really dialed. Um, it's it's pretty good. So I'm I'm really excited and I think it'll be great for our program. When you're David Ford and the airline doesn't know exactly where your clubs are, is it hard to explain to them, like, these are, I'm not a North guy calling about my clubs without being a jerk about it? <laughs> no, I just, I just told them that I need my golf bag. <laughs> and, um, they seem pretty helpful about it, honestly. So shout out Delta. I, I guess not for, not for losing them, but uh, I, I feel like they've been helpful the last <laughs> few hours about it. Were you like, look for the one that says Walker Cup champion? Yeah. <laughs> those are mine. Let's move those to the top of the list. Yeah, no, they're probably on, on eBay right now. Just, um, <laughs> now Some of those but, Great Britain and Ireland fans. <laughs> so that's why it all happened. I think the GB and I guys might have taken them. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> all right, so you come from a golf. Your dad played golf, right, mm-hmm. collegiately. So I, I assume you've been around the game pretty much your whole life. Mm-hmm. When, when did you start playing? Yeah, I started, um, I guess I, I picked up a club for the first time probably around age eight or nine. Uh, but then I played other sports from eight or nine until 14 and then mm-hmm. uh, played golf as well. Like just kind of played a bunch of different things and golf was kind of in the background um, with those other things. And then around the age of 14, I focused solely on golf, uh, dropped all the other sports. And then uh, my brother and I kind of together just focused on golf. And, and your twin brother. Twin, and he's here. He's and coming he's here, here right? now. Yeah, yeah, he's here. Have you guys ever pulled any hilarious twin switcheroos? Yeah, we were, uh, <laughs> we actually, nothing with like girls or dates or anything. Um, but we were actually, somebody asked me this uh, a few weeks ago too, just with him coming to Carolina and uh, me being here, it's kind of, right. I've gotten a lot of questions about it. So we were in high school, we went to the same high school, really small high school. 
And uh, we were in class one day, two different classes, and we just decided that before the class, obviously, we were going to switch classes. Um, and so I went to his class, he went to my class, and then all the kids in the class knew that we were not in the correct class, but right. uh, the teacher had no idea. So uh, <laughs> and we, and then at, at whatever it was, 12 o'clock, uh, we set a time like, all right, 12 o'clock, meet in the hall, we're, we're going to switch back. And so <laughs> that high five yeah, on the way halfway, past each other. <laughs> halfway through the class, we switched, we switched back. And I don't know if the teachers ever found out, but the all the kids in the class knew. Right. So yeah, it was it was fun though. You're left handed, right? Correct. Is your brother left handed? He's right handed. Oh man, okay. So this will be easy to when I'm watching you guys next year, yeah, well, yeah. it'll be totally easy. Yeah. A lot of What easier. challenges are, are there as a left handed golfer, if any, that other people don't think about? Yeah, I don't I honestly like I forget I'm lefty sometimes because <laughs> I I uh I haven't really thought of any, but I see another lefty, I'm like, man, that guy swings kinda weird. Like <laughs> it's backwards. <laughs> But no, I don't. I don't really think there's there's much. I think um, at times there's an advantage just on certain holes. But sure, um, yeah, I don't feel like for the game I have, it's any disadvantage. Are you left handed in everything you do, or just golf? Yeah, everything I do. Okay, because sometimes you get people who throw one way and write the other way. Yeah, Hu- Hubert Davis writes left handed no, and does everything else right handed. Huh? There you go. Shot right handed. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, when you're not playing golf, what are you doing that's fun? Hmm. That's a good question. I, uh, I just started trying to learn guitar. Oh <laughs> yeah. David, leave some females for the rest of Chapel Hill. <laughs> well, that was I'm my on next the men's thing. golf team and I play guitar. <laughs> said that was my next thing. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, no, I think, uh, I don't have a lot of time recently. Um, but I think that if I do have time, then guitar is something that I think is, is fun. I'm not good at it yet, but, um, I, intend to continue to learn guitar. So um, I guess that's my, my thing I'm trying right now. It, do you ever get tired of playing? Because golf for so many people is relaxation. It's their getaway. But for you, it's it's your every day. D- does it ever get tiresome for you? No, I don't think it does. Um, I've thought about it, I guess, in the last, just with how much golf yeah, I've you've been, been playing. you've been playing a ton. Yeah. yeah. The last eight or nine months, we had a really busy spring, a uh, really busy summer, and then the fall has already been busy. So it's with how much golf I've been playing, I, I guess there was a, a, a time where I was like, huh, do I really like golf? And like every, <laughs> every time it was like, yes, like I enjoy playing golf and um, I enjoy being on the golf course with people and um, not necessarily like meeting new people, but um, I think just seeing all my friends at amateur events and even professional events, um, just seeing guys there has been, that's one of the things I like about it a lot. And then um, going out and practicing by myself hasn't gotten old yet. So um, when it does, I might reevaluate. But yeah, I think it's, I really enjoy golf and that's why I play. How do you avoid a couple things? One, the massive farmer's tan. And then two, like you see the guys who've got the hat on and you know what I mean? Like they're like, they're like bright white on their head and then the bottom of their face is like sunburn. How do you avoid it? Well, yeah, I got hair to... Yeah, to, that helps. See, I mean, that's, yeah. you and I are talking yeah. <laughs> different languages right there. But, um, yeah, I wear like a hat Like, Stuart Sink's the worst, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean, awesome player, but... Right, oh, well, yeah, I didn't mean, like, worse, like, a, <laughs> that Stuart Sting guy. British owned that Open Championship. That was fake. No, yeah. I meant, like, for the, uh, yeah, yeah. For the head, the hat thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think if, if I were to go bald, then... Yeah, you can call me if that happens. Would, yeah, we can talk about it. I wouldn't... Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't have a good hat tan. I mean, it would just be, it'd be bright white up top and then pretty tan, but I don't, I don't do anything to avoid the farmer's tan. And honestly, like if I didn't wear a hat everywhere, if I didn't have hair covering my, like my head, (laughs) then, um, I think I I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't do any tanning for farmer's tans (laughs) either. So, uh, I don't know. That was really my question. Are you going to the tanning bed? Is really my question. I don't, I don't look in the mirror that much either, but, uh, I, uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty pale. <laughs> What's your best club? I'm changing. What's your favorite club? Um, I guess it changes. Right now, it's my putter. Uh, like that. Yeah, definitely my putter. The last I didn't hit it that well this summer, but uh, I was I putted pretty well. So definitely my putter. Right Have now. you had it for like a really long time, or is it relatively new? Uh, I feel like it's a long time. Really? It's, yeah, it's been almost three years now, and uh, I kind of wanted this putter for a while though. So I wanted it for probably two years before I got it. Um, it's a Special putter, I guess. <laughs> Why is it special? It's a circle T. Um, okay. So it's 
more expensive. Uh, it has a like a, a T with a circle on it. For <laughs> circle T? <laughs> circle T. For, like, uh, it's for tour use only is what the mm. grip says, too. So it's it's kind of just that uh, added element of personalization, and it feels like mine. Okay, so when someone who is as quality of golfers, is that like a Christmas gift? Is that a, like, you, you're like, it It happens, at, like, how does that happen? How do yeah, you get it's, it? Yeah, it's... It's a, it's a titleist putter, so they uh, I think they change a little bit with how much they give them out, but um, I know if you're on the PGA Tour or even on the Corn Ferry Tour, uh, it's a little bit easier to get them. Um, I think they, they give them out pretty freely, um, but if you're an amateur, it's, it's difficult now to get them uh, unless you're a, a top-ranked amateur, like top, top 10, top 20 in the world. Um, I think it's a lot tougher, but yeah, it's... It's the circle T's are hard to come by right now. So did you get like a call from the circle T boss? I was like, David, I got some news for you. Like, how, yeah. do, how does it occur? Yeah, I was asking for it for a while. And then I got a text from uh, the titles rep that I'm close with. And uh, he sent me a picture of the putter while I was at a tournament. And it was before the final round of a tournament. I was playing well. And then he sent me a picture of the putter. And my mom showed it to me on 14, the last day, 14. And she was like, here, like, this is the putter that's at your house right now. We're in Florida, and we had a 10-hour drive to get to the putter. She was like, here, you're going to have to wait 20 more hours and play five more holes, but this is your putter. And I was like, oh, that's sweet. And then I finished. I mean, it was like a horrible finish. Like, I think I three-putted like almost every hole coming in. Like, It's like, I can't stop thinking about that putter, the circle T. I was like, well, I don't want to putt well with this one because I'm just going to throw it away. It's like, yeah, you know? <laughs> I know, but yeah, it was. A, I, I'll never forget that, actually. It was like... I almost started crying. I think <laughs> I, I don't know why it, was, it meant so much to me, but yeah, it was a it was a special day when I got the putter. I'm I'm guessing professional golf is is your aspiration. Is that fair to say? Correct. So what uh, I mean what what are the next steps for you individually to try to achieve that goal? Yeah, I think there's uh, within the game of golf, there's things that I need to get better at. I feel like um, I've seen in my game the last four months that like when I get put in a a pressure situation, I usually perform better. And when I'm really nervous, I tend to play better. So I think within the game of golf, there's, there's more for me to work on, um, just physically, um, just about my own technique and swing and game than there is mentally, because I feel like when I get put in a situation where that requires mental toughness and that requires just self-belief, um, it's usually been really good for me, but, um, I, I struggle sometimes on the events where, um, I don't put as much effort in or like, I don't feel like they're as important. Um, and so I've, I've kind of seen that, like, I really need to sharpen my game so that when I'm, I guess, not as mentally invested in a tournament, then my game can still carry me. How fun is it for a Tar Heel that there are starting to be more and more Tar Heels in professional golf? Like I know there's a bunch of Oklahoma State guys, a bunch of Georgia Tech guys, but like there's starting to be some more Tar Heels there on the professional ranks. Yeah, it's it's like the coolest thing ever for me. Um, it's something that when I was recruited, um, all the other schools that I was getting recruited by had the by far the most players on tour, the four other schools. They're uh, Georgia, LSU, Georgia Tech, and Oklahoma State. And they all have way more tour players than UNC and UNC had like literally zero in the last 10 years. And, um, they all used that when I was being recruited to say like, why are you going, like, why would you consider this school that doesn't have any tour players? And the UNC coaches told me like, you don't just get a magic wand at a school and like guys don't just go on tour, like as a magic wand. And, um, I kind of, that was the the hardest thing I think about committing to UNC is like, believing that that was true because all the other schools told me it wasn't. So um, it's awesome to see now to look on just at the trajectory of the program and know that we have a lot of guys who are probably going to be on tour. Um, and then seeing Ryan Burnett, Ryan Gerard, Ben Griffin, those guys play so well. Um, it's just, it's a testament to how well our program has grown um, and just like how much Deebs has put into the program, Coach Debatetto. And uh, it's honestly, it's the coolest thing ever for me. Carolina's the number one team in the country this fall. Uh, the season begins mid-September. Jones has consistently said he feels like the NCAA golf championship, one of the hardest to win. Ah, it's got to be hard to win. Just like, it's just you got to play well for like so long. <laughs> it feels like yeah. it. <laughs> You've seen it up close. What is so difficult about winning in this sport at the team level, at the NCAA championship level? Yeah, I think it's – there's a lot of factors uh, that go into it. The first is that golf is really hard, and – getting five guys to play well on the same week is, is super hard. Um, and then 
I think there's also a factor of home course advantage. Um, I think that Arizona State had an awesome chance to win the last three years, and they had a great team to do it. And um, I know how much they played Greyhawk, and I know how little we got to play Greyhawk <laughs> just in the national championship. But um, I think that where the course is has honestly something to do with it. But um, at the end of the day, I mean, all we can do is control our, our, our own game and what we do as a program. So I think that there's a lot of factors that go into it. Uh, golf is really hard, but I think the more you put yourself in situations to win, the more comfortable you can get with uh, imagining that you're going to win a national championship, then um, that's what's going to lead you there. So I think that we're doing a lot this year to, um, I guess, put all the pieces together in the puzzle because we have the talent, we have the coaching, we have every all the tools you need to win a national championship. Uh, we just It's just about putting ourselves in situations where we're comfortable winning. Okay, a couple nerd questions before we let you go. What's your favorite course that you've played? Eagle Point in Wilmington, really? North Carolina. Yeah. This is a dude just coming from St. Andrews, and you're yeah. saying Eagle Point. St. Andrews is cool. I actually I really like that course. Um, I just don't like how wide the fairways are because I feel like the, the – I mean, people on both sides, but the GB and I guys knew that you could miss it 100 yards left, so – some of them just kept missing 100 yards left. Right. and I mean, myself included. I tried to get the left miss in also. But uh, the course was awesome. But Eagle Point is one of the best golf experiences and also one of the best golf courses that I've ever seen. Austin Greaser seems a little crazy. We've had Austin on the pod before. Is he a little crazy? Yeah, he is. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, super crazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's like seems like kind of intense every now and then. He's, he's intense, but uh, and he's one of my best friends. He's, he's real. He'll shoot you straight. Really honest guy, so... Um, yeah, that's why he's one of my best friends too. <laughs> All right. Stroke play, match play. If you could only do one, what would it be? Mm, I think stroke play. Really? Yeah. I think, I think match play has its moments. Cause um, everybody else loves match play. Like why people watching love match play. Yeah. I think match play is exciting and it's fun. And that's why I think the U S amateur should continue to be match play. But I think, I think the winner of the NCAA championship is better than the USAM winner. Sometimes like over the course of 20 years, if you look at the USAM winners and look sure. at the guys who uh, weren't as highly ranked as some of the national championship winners, um, I think it's it's different than stroke play. And I think that, honestly, in my opinion, stroke play determines the best champion. Not every time, but uh, over the course of 20 years, more than match play does.